Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for May 2024. So on May 2nd, we are going to see Pluto, the great transformer himself, go retrograde at two degrees in Aquarius energy. So first of all, I am going to recommend that you listen to May's energy forecast. If you haven't already, I'm going to recommend that you download your Zodiac forecast if you haven't already, because that's going to really give you a bigger, broader picture on what Pluto's energy shift is actually going to mean for us as a collective. And of course, in that Zodiac forecast, as in individuals, really understanding the area, the sector of your life that this particular energy is going to influence the most. And of course, if you've downloaded your Taurus season e-guide, you're going to want to flip to this particular energy shift and really capture your mood, your attitude, your focus, your feelings, because this is going to be a long-term storyline. Just a review. Pluto, being the great transformer himself, creates a series, a path of damage and destruction in order to collapse, to remove, to totally deconstruct the aspects and elements in our lives that are no longer serving us. Of course, we're seeing this on the collective scale, but we're seeing this in our own individual lives. And of course, that damage destruction is needed in order to clear the space for something new to be born, birthed in its place. Pluto goes through this renewal, this resurrection, this phoenix rising energy in order to push us into our power. Pluto retrogrades pretty much every year for about five months. And of course, just giving you a little bit of a backstory, we first watched Pluto kind of enter into this Aquarius energy back in March of 2023. There was a dipping of the toe in Aquarius energy, and then we retrograded back into the Capricorn energy that, of course, we've been sitting in since 2008. And again, we watch Pluto re-enter into this Aquarius energy January 20th of this year. And now we are going to watch Pluto retrograde once again. Here's the thing. We are going to watch Pluto go back into the beginning degrees of this Aquarius energy. He will actually creep back into the Capricorn energy in September of this year. And then we are going to watch Pluto go direct on April or sorry, October 11th. And then we are going to watch him re-enter into Aquarius energy November 19th, 2024 for good taking us all the way into 2044. So this is a pretty big deal. Now, just a heads up, when we actually retrograde back into that Capricorn energy, we will be sitting at that critical crisis degree of 29 degrees for quite some time. And again, Pluto actually going retrograde kicks off the rest of the year that we will have one or more planets in a retrograde. So I hope that you enjoyed the quote unquote direct energy over the last couple of days, seeing as Mercury went direct, although still in his post retrograde shadow period until May 13th, um, this was a very short window of time that we had all planets direct. And now with Pluto going retrograde, this is just a domino effect of all of the other major heavy hitting planets going through their retrogrades from now until the end of the year. So with that being said, Initially, because Pluto is like an odor planet, yes, he has a huge influence on us. Yes, he has a major impact on society. Um, but I hate to use the word subtle because Pluto is so intense that I don't think there's anything subtle about it. But the days surrounding Pluto actually shifting in direction is probably the most craziness, chaotic time of confusion, of heaviness, of intensity that you're going to get. Now, once we kind of have this disruption, this turbulence, if you will, things will settle down and we'll be working on a particular storyline over the next couple of months. And heads up, Pluto takes us into the fall where we're going to have our next eclipse season. So while Pluto is retrograde, we're kind of moving inward as we do when any planet is retrograde, that energy gets internalized. And so we're moving in, we're examining this new version of self, we're examining this operating system, and we need to take a very good look, reevaluating, if you will, where there's still a power struggle between the old version of self and the new version of self, between the old egoic programming and the new higher self programming. 
programming. Even more than that, we do a deep dive into our psyche to examine where the seeds of this self-destructive, self-sabotaging program actually got planted. And heads up, spoiler alert, take a good look at the first seven years of your life. That is what established your unconscious realm and that is the looping pattern and behavior that you have been making choices from as an adult. Okay, so we have a lot of inner child work that we have to do. We have to take a good look at our pain and trauma patterns. There is a connection there. And doing this reevaluation, this inner look, if you will, we're going to reveal new insights with where it is that we need to boss up, take power and control back, not only in our mental plane, not only in our emotions, but in our physical realm. Pluto is about power and control. And we have to examine where it is that we're either afraid of our own power or not utilizing it in the ways that we should. Again, self-sabotaging programs instead of actually using that power out in the real world to advance, to pursue new paths, new pursuits. So there's a certain level of truth that is going to be revealed to us by doing this inner work. Again, Pluto rules over Scorpio energy. That is where shadow work is. That's where death endings and closures need to take place in order for a rebirth, a resurrection, a renewal. Again, the phoenix rising into a more powerful version of self. And so although we may see a lot of pressure in our inner realm, there may actually be a, let's call it decrease of external pressures pushing us into certain situations. This is really us taking a good look at who it is that we've been, who it is that we currently are, and the battle royale that is ensuing inside of us between our heart and our head and between our old self and new self. This is going to be a boss up energy. Again, it's just like taking a good look at the operating system of a computer and realizing where it is that, you know, we need to defrag and remove certain files out and in that kind of insert new files, insert a new program in order for the computer to be operating at its optimal power. That is us. And so from now until the fall, we're definitely going to be taking a good look at the areas within us that we've been struggling to kind of stand in our power about, uh, taking a good look at this new version of self, taking a good look at the operating system and improving in every area in which we can. So, you know, in the long term vision, especially when we creep back into that Capricorn energy, the vibe is definitely going to shift. Um, but for right now, we are acting as the observer. That's what that Aquarius energy is all about and allows us to emotionally detach so that we're not getting caught up in the actual, let's call it outcome. Uh, realization, if you will, triggers and activations, if you will, of where it is that we kind of adopted some self-sabotaging programs and patterns and behaviors, and we're able to nip it in the bud. Because again, being removed emotionally allows you to see the intricacies, the inner workings, if you will, how the dots connect, how you actually arrived at this particular position where this new version of self is struggling for power, is struggling for control. So we're definitely going to have a lot of different energies really pressurize us to take a good look inside of ourselves, especially uncovering some unconscious thoughts, ideas, memories, actions, patterns, and behaviors in order for us to install a better operating program.